Hello, kindergarten. It's Miss Brennan. Happy, happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing well this morning. Here's our time for our final book this week. And our book is called A Visitor for Bear. It's called A Visitor for Bear. Now, thinking about this story, we know that yesterday we talked about Big Al and Shrimpy. And we know that we're thinking about how they are the same and how they are different. And I want you to also think about that with this story. How are the bear and the character of the mouse the same and how are they different? So again, remember, when we're thinking about differences, we can think about lots of things, size, shape, color, um, if somebody is smart or if somebody is you know, not so smart, how are people, how are different uh, characters different in a story? So let's look right here again. We see that we have cats. We know that the gray cat and the orange cat are different colors. And then we also see that they're the same because they're both cats, they're the same type of animal, but they're simply different colors, okay? And there are lots of ways that people can be the same or different. Maybe one person is a boy, maybe one person is a girl. Or if you see two characters that are animals, maybe they're different types of animals. Maybe they're different sizes, different shapes, whatnot. So we're thinking about all the ways in which they're the same and how are they different. So again, we're gonna read A Visitor for Bear by Bonnie Becker. Uh, she is the author, so she wrote the words. And Katie McDonald Denton, who is the illustrator, she drew all the pictures in our story. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with A Visitor for Bear. Ooh, and this right here we see is a tea set. A visitor for bear. No one ever came to bear's house. It had always been that way. And Bear was quite sure he didn't like visitors. He even had a sign. So right here, this says no visitors allowed. No visitors allowed. One morning, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. We know that Bear does not like visitors. When he opened his door, there was a mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. No visitors allowed, Bear said, pointing to the sign. Go away. He closed the door and went back to the business of making his breakfast. He set out one cup and one spoon. But when he opened the cupboard to get one bowl, there was a mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. So let's think for a second. How do you think Bear feels about finding the mouse in his cupboard? How do you think Bear feels about finding the mouse in his cupboard? Well, if we look back at the first page of our story, we knew he had a sign that says no visitors allowed. So we know that that means he does not like it um, having people over. He does not like people at his door. He doesn't want people in his house at all. So I can infer that he probably is very upset because we know that earlier he told the mouse no and now all of a sudden his, the mouse is inside of his cupboard. He does not like that. So remember, earlier in the story, the mouse came over, Bear slammed the door, he said no, now he's here. So I bet you he's pretty angry, he's pretty mad. I told you to leave, cried Bear. Perhaps we could have just a spot of tea, said the mouse. Out, commanded Bear. Most sorry, said the mouse. I'll be going now. Bear showed him the door and shut it firmly. Well, that wasn't very nice. Then he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the bread drawer for one slice of bread, there was the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Hmm. 
I can see, looking at the picture, the bear is not happy at all to see this mouse inside of his bread drawer. Not at all. He seems pretty angry. Unbelievable, Rumble Bear. Away with you, the moose. I do like a bit of cheese, said the mouse. Bear pointed a rigid claw toward the door. So the word the moose is just another way of saying go away. Yes, then, here I go, said the mouse. Farewell. And the mouse whisked out the door. So what do you guys think? Do you think the mouse will be back or do you think he's gone forever? Let's see. This time, Bear shut the door very firmly and locked it twice. Sorry, tight. So look right here. He's locking that door, putting that thing there. He locked the windows too for good measure. So he's locking his door, he's locking his windows. Let's see what happens. Then once again, he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the fridge to get one egg, so what do you guys think is going to happen? There was a mouse, small and gray and bright eyed, of course. Be gone, roared Bear. Oh no, he is not happy to see this mouse in his fridge. He is yelling and screaming and angry. A crackling fire, ventured the mouse. This is impossible, intolerable, insufferable, cried Bear, shaking with anger and disbelief. Terribly sorry, murmured the mouse. Now you see me, now you don't. I am gone. And the mouse looked very sorry indeed while he waited for Bear to unbolt the door and let him out again. So how do you think Mouse feels right now? So we know that Bear is very angry at Mouse for continuing to show up in his house, but how does Mouse feel that the Bear is telling him to please leave? How do you think that makes Mouse feel? This time, before he went back to the business of making his breakfast, Bear shut the door very, very, very firmly, locked it, boarded the window shut, stopped up the chimney, and even plugged the drain in the bathtub. Carefully, Bear set about the business of making his breakfast. He opened the cupboard. No mess. Ah, oh, he opened the bread drawer. Nothing. Whew. He opened the fridge. Mouse free. Yes, indeed. He lifted the lid to the tea kettle. Do you think Mouse is going to be in there? Let's see. There was the mouse. Small and gray and well. You know the rest. Bear fell to the floor and wept. I give up. Ah, oh, he blubbered. You win. I am undone. So thinking about the word undone, that simply means he just doesn't know what to do anymore. He feels frustrated. He's upset. He doesn't know how to solve his problem. So sorry, said the mouse, but perhaps if I could have just a bit of cheese and a cup of tea, and do you think we could unstop the chimney and have a nice fire? Bear blew his nose with a loud honk. But then you must go, he sniffled. No visitors allowed. You have my word. Bear unshuttered and unboarded the windows unlocked the doors, unstoppered the chimney, and unplugged the drain. He brought out two plates of cheese and two teacups, and he made a crackling fire in the fireplace for two sets of toes. The mouse warmed his feet and nibbled and sipped, and Bear did too. They sat for a long while, the clock in Bear's house 
ticked loudly. Bear cleared his throat. The mouse looked most attentive. No one had ever been most attentive to Bear. So attentive is just a word that means that someone's paying attention to you. They're, they're looking at you when you talk to them, they're paying attention to what you're doing. The fire is nice, Bear announced. Lovely, said the mouse. No one had ever said Bear's fires were lovely. I can do a headstand, said Bear. Very impressive, exclaimed the mouse. Bear told a joke. The mouse laughed heartily. No one had ever laughed at Bear's jokes before. Bear began to think of another joke. The mouse set down his teacup. Bear quickly lifted the teapot. There's plenty more, he said. So thinking about these last couple of pages, let's look here and here and looking here. How do you think Bear feels now? So we know at the beginning, he was feeling really angry and upset. How does Bear feel now that he's had mouse over for tea? How does Bear feel now? Think about the pictures. Think about the story. How does Bear feel now? So sorry, said the mouse. Most kind, but I must be on my way. Really, you needn't go, said Bear. I am off, said the mouse, springing up from his chair. Wait, cried Bear, but the mouse stepped out the door. Toodle, said the mouse. Don't go, wailed Bear, throwing his body across the path. But I gave you my word said the mouse, pointing at the no visitors sign. So think about this for a second. How does Bear feel now that Mouse is leaving? How does Bear feel now that Mouse is leaving? Look at the picture, think about what Bear just told him, don't go. How does he feel that Mouse is leaving? Oh, that, cried Bear pulling down the sign and tearing it up. That's for salesmen, not for friends. So look at the picture. What did Bear just do? What did Bear just do? Not for friends? asked the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Bear nodded. The mouse's bright eyes glowed brighter. Bear smiled. Do you like one lump or two? Said Bear most politely. I like two, said the mouse and Bear agreed. So think about how Bear feels at the end of our story. Think about how he feels at the end of our story. And remember, you wanna keep in mind, how are they the same and how are they different? How are Bear and the mouse the same and how are they different from one another? You can think about size, you can think about color, you can think about how they feel, how are they different and how are they the same? All right. I hope you enjoyed that story. I hope you guys have a wonderful, happy Friday and a great, great weekend. Bye for now.